Sparks art is the most important piece of imagery a game has. A distillation of everything the game represents, great box art tells you exactly what a game's vibe is, and is artfully arranged specifically to intrigue and entice. Great box art can be as memorable and impactful as the game it's selling, and when box art is working, you know exactly what you're in for. You might not like what you're in for, but you know. But occasionally things will go very, very wrong, and a really good game will end up saddled with box art that is at best bewildering, and at worst deeply or hilariously hideous. Pity these great games that absolutely whiffed the box art. Fans of Donald Duck might want to skip the entry on Amnesia The Dark Descent. <laughs> Released to critical acclaim, Eco is the brainchild of auteur director Fumito Ueda. A minimalist masterpiece, this pared down adventure game immerses you in the strange world of Eco, a young boy with horns who is considered a bad omen and condemned to death, but who escapes with a captive girl who speaks another language. <laughs> With a simple story of an unlikely friendship elegantly told with minimal voice acting, Eco set the template for Ueda's later games, the similarly acclaimed Shadow of the Colossus and The Last Guardian. Ueda's passion for storytelling is clear in Eco, but you might not know he even painted the beautiful box art for the Japanese and European versions of the game. Basing it on The Nostalgia of the Infinite, an early 20th century piece by Italian metaphysical painter Giorgio de Chirico. Wow. Anyway, here's the box art for North America. Ah! Okay, let's see it again. I'm ready. In a very, very far cry from the box art Ueda crafted and the minimalist aesthetic of the game itself, this box art is a cluttered nightmare, where each individual asset is a particularly hideous CG rendering of a model that looks almost entirely unlike the actual in-game model. Eco himself is easily the worst thing here, his scrunched up face appearing to say, hey, check out this big stick. Anyway, want to buy this game? Nope, didn't think so. In a 2009 interview, Japan Studios VP Yasuhide Kobayashi said he believed this dodgy box art contributed to poor sales of the game in the US, which makes perfect sense to be honest. Of course, not everything about this box art is horrible. The ESRB rating, for instance, looking pretty sharp. Just focus on that. What are you waiting for? <laughs> we offer you this chance, Batman. If you made a game that lots of people enjoyed, it's fair enough to be proud of that. Batman Arkham City was one such title, released in 2011 to critical acclaim, with reviewers and players heaping praise on the game's combat, immersive and atmospheric world, and many other things besides. In the long list of things to enjoy about Arkham City, the picture on the game's box doesn't really register, but it's cool nonetheless. A grayscale aesthetic Batman with a little bit of blood on the knuckles, presumably from where Batman has beaten the shit out of one of his hated enemies. Perhaps the Riddler. I mean, it could be anyone, but we'd like to say the Riddler. Such were the plaudits received by Arkham City that a Game of the Year edition was released in May of the following year. This time, however, the game's quality was somewhat overshadowed by the reaction to its box art. Which is, we have to say, fairly hideous. Although the picture of Batman is still pretty neat, the Caped Crusader's presence is overwhelmed by gigantofont praise for the game and details on bonus DLC, all splattered on the box in a volume that makes the game feel less like a collectible and more like a bus stop advert. Also, it's far from the worst thing about this box art, but it looks like the blood is maybe Batman's blood now? So the Riddler is just out there, unbrutalized. No thank you. Carnage Rally is it Carnage? 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 Uh, okay, we're going with Carnage because well, it's a word. Carnage Rally is a 2002 top-down racer for the Game Boy Advance in the vein of Micro Machines of the kind I'm sure plenty of us feel some nostalgia for. 
It's also a pretty great game. Carnage Rally has a Metacritic score of 81, and it's no surprise considering that the cars handle well and the graphics are really impressive for a game running on the Game Boy Advance hardware, with visuals that give each race a real sense of depth. Of course, hardly anybody would have seen those impressive graphics, because playing Carnage Rally would have first required picking up the box in a shop and taking it to a person and holding the box out to that person and saying, I want to pay money for this in a scenario where the box in question appears thusly. I... what? Unfortunately, this pretty great racing game is now only famous for having perhaps the worst video game box art ever to be committed to cardboard. Looking as it does like what you'd see in the split second after running over Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day as he goes bouncing over your windshield. It's a shame because again, the racing itself is pretty sweet, or we imagine it would be if we could see past the box art that's now permanently burned onto our retinas. Maybe if I close my eyes it'll go away? Nope, still there. Imagine, if you will, that it's your job to create an advert for cute bubble bursting game Buster Move 2. The game, a charming puzzler, is about aiming coloured bubbles into the top of the screen in order to match three or more bubbles, tactically stacking and bursting them to win. So you'd probably, I think it's safe to assume, want the advert to feature a grotesque image of a man, mouth yawning open as if in agony, while his eyes are forced open with matchsticks. No? Oh, well, that's the direction publisher Acclaim went in. As well as this frankly disturbing imagery, which repeats over and over, the ad for Buster Move 2 Arcade Edition on Sega Saturn and PS1 also features the recurring text, can't stop, must pop, must bust, or else I'm dust, as if relaying the manifesto of a bubble-themed serial killer. But at least, the ad suggests, the actual box art for the game will be a bit less horrifying, because it features the colourful bubble puzzles that actually make up the gameplay. Except, you know, when you accidentally attach the wrong file to an email but press send before you realised? Well... Somehow, the actual box art for Buster Move 2 Arcade Edition for these console versions ended up being that nightmarish matchstick image, along with the text, so addictive it should be illegal. Which, when viewed all together, definitely implies that this is a game where you enjoy torturing men to death with matchsticks, not a cute puzzle game about a little dinosaur bursting bubbles. <laughs> Chalk this one up to 90s weirdness. I'm sure they got things under control for 2002 Super Buster Move on the PS2. Okay, Acclaim, is everything okay over there? You've been to the refinery, have you not? I don't believe I have. Is it connected to the... What did you call it? The Inner Sanctum. My most precious chamber, Daniel. And it lies well beyond the refinery. In fact, it lies beneath the very stone of Brennenberg. Amnesia The Dark Descent has been called one of the most frightening games ever made. And if you want a sense of how creepy it is, the safe zone in the game looks like this. Yeah, doesn't feel terribly safe. Anyone with the steel nerves required to play 2010's Amnesia The Dark Descent will know exactly why this first-person survival horror is so well regarded as it plunges protagonist Daniel into an extremely frightening crawl through the terrifying castle Brennenberg in a bid to recover his lost memories. With an oppressive atmosphere and no way of surviving monster attacks beyond fleeing and hiding, Amnesia is a game that's all about creating and sustaining a sense of dread, rather than intense combat encounters. You could play the game barely glimpsing its many horrors as you edge nervously through the castle, ready to run and hide at any moment. Because, as any horror fan knows, the threat of the monster lurking in the darkness is always scarier than the monster itself. Any horror fan, but not presumably whoever at publisher THQ signed off on the box art for the physical version of the game. Oh no! In a tragic misstep, the Dark Descent's box art is accidentally quite hilarious, depicting a nonplus Daniel being ambushed by one of the game's floppy-mouthed monsters, which were pretty scary when they were stalking you through the game, but here look more like if Donald Duck got paid to advertise Invisalign. 
This physical release seriously undercuts the brooding atmosphere of the actual game, but on the other hand is arguably useful. After all, it's hard to begrudge anything that makes Amnesia The Dark Descent a little less terrifying. Just prop the box up in your peripheral vision while playing and you should be fine. Do kind of want to check out Invisalign though. <laughs> You'll probably have noticed a theme in this video of Western publishers taking a perfectly fine Japanese game and fouling up the box art in the localization. Anyway, Breath of Fire 3 is an epic PlayStation RPG that tells the story of Ryu, a boy with the power to change into a dragon, and who indeed starts the game as a preserved baby dragon discovered in a chunk of crystal. <laughs> the Japanese box art for the third entry in Capcom's RPG series, featuring a lush, colourful illustration that shows the main characters arranged dramatically against a classic anime backdrop. It's a striking image, and one Capcom's European division clearly saw and thought, I think we can do a little better. The only problem was... They couldn't! In one of gaming's most spectacular glowdowns, the PAL region version of Breath of Fire 3 featured only this crudely computer-generated Angel Woman, who is possibly supposed to be Nina from the game, although doesn't have much in common with her, not least because we don't remember any instances of Nina's feet catching fire. But hey, it's a long game. I don't remember what happens to everyone's feet. <laughs> The enduring popularity of Mega Man is really incredible. After all, bear in mind that this run and gun series, which features cute, blue suited, do gooder Mega Man fighting the nefarious Dr. Wily alongside an increasingly large cast of friends and rivals, started in 1987 and is still running and gunning today, having spawned several spin off series and cameos in other games. What's really incredible about Mega Man's impressive longevity, however, is that anyone wanted to play any Mega Man games at all, considering the box art for the very first one looked like this. How is this the box art for Mega Man 1? This should be the box art for Mega Man 41, in which a visibly unwell Mega Man comes out of retirement, then collapses and dies in the first level. Looking like something you'd see spray painted on the side of an unsafe carnival flying saucer ride, the famously bad box art for Mega Man 1 was allegedly the result of the boss of Capcom US telling the marketing team they needed box art for a localized version of the game completed by the next day. A ludicrous deadline that might explain, for instance, why instead of featuring a cute anime Mega Man and his iconic gun arm, this Mega Man is just holding a pistol? It's a testament really to the quality of the early Mega Man games that the series was able to survive this hiccup and become one of gaming's most iconic franchises. Besides, Capcom would later formally acknowledge the crappy Mega Man box art by adding Bad Mega Man to 2012 Street Fighter Cross Tekken. This is my destiny. Here it comes! So the unpleasantness is all behind us. After all, it was only one game, and by the time of Mega Man 2's localization, he, oh my god, is still just holding a gun. Unbelievable. So those are some amazing games with terrible box art. Like, you just, you know, you're so close. Nearly, nearly got there and just stumbled at the finish. I don't think they were that close. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but like the game was good, but then all oh, they, all right, they had to do gotcha. was get the box art right. Yes. And they fluffed it, absolutely yes. fluffed it. Fumbled right before the touch line. That's it. Oh, no, that's we an American fumbled right Oh, the, no. We ah, right the touch oh, line. But, well, you know what we haven't fumbled is all of these other videos that we work really hard on. And look, we do, we do really good thumbnails, right? We work really hard on our thumbnails. I do so much cutting out of video game characters. It's like, a, you know, it's like a, a reflex to me now. <laughs>